So you're going through your e-scrap and you come across a board that looks something like this. Now what do we do? We've got some options here. So come on, let's dive in and talk about the things to consider when you have a borderline board. So first, let's just take a look at the board by itself, just as it is right now. We have an LCD screen here with two daughter cards sandwiched on top of each other. And then we have tin silver fingers. I'm assuming those are tin silver fingers. Lots of ICs all along this board. Here's a big socket mounted. We have epoxy dip tantalum capacitors, these big knobby looking things like right there. Uh, we have an oscillator that may or may not have silver in it. Uh, then we have some tweaker switches here and uh, capacitors. Uh, so there is definitely some good value on the back. Eh, nothing, really. Uh, so what you're looking at here in its current state is a peripheral low-grade board. Peripheral low-grade board because there's just so much stuff hanging on it. Now then, let's take a look at some of these things and see what we can do, you know, what makes sense for us to work on this board. I'm curious to see what's going on with these daughter cards. All right, so just uh, soldered onto this lower card. And we have some icy flat packs along here. We have some resistors. We have visible gold enig. Let's go ahead and spin, turn, twist uh, these tabs so they line up with their holes. And then once they line up with their holes, we can remove the LCD screen. I just chucked those in the shred because I don't have a buyer for uh, LCD screens at this, at this point. Now, you can see the gold that's in there, but it's covered by a thick, goopy film. Uh, so, unfortunately, that is going to cause problems in the processing and that can only go in the uh, low grade when it's got this thick, goopy uh, film stuff. Now, we could look at maybe ways to clean that off and I'm going to set that aside because I might mess around with that for gold recovery. Uh, so, we're just going to set that aside for right now. This board is now a peripheral high-grade board. We have visible, visible gold all along it. We have ICs along here. In a newer version, these probably would have been little black dollops uh, that look like somebody dropped uh, plastic goo on the, on the uh, board. All right, peripheral high-grade. Set that aside for a minute. This daughter card looks like it was just a way to connect everything. All right, so let's see. All right, so these risers here are I'm thinking aluminum. They have no magnetic response. And they are very soft and silvery all the way through. So those are aluminum.
right, we set those aside. We have these screws that I know are ferrous because they have rust on them. And we're gonna get this wire off of here. I'm gonna throw this wire in with my number three insulated. It's pretty thin. But for now, I'm gonna set it aside as we look at everything we got off of this board. All right, we have eh, the very thinnest of possible thinnest gold sheen on these. So very, very thinly plated. Uh, it's, it's just a connector board. You can see where these connectors, they run through lines to the connectors that were on the other side. And that was what was connecting to the LCD screen. We have over here on this side, we have an IC. Uh, these are capacitors. We have a tweaker knob. Uh, in, that, in this case, it's a resistance, a resistor. And over here is another resistor. So, yeah, there is visible gold and an IC, but there isn't a whole lot of value here, so we're gonna call that peripheral low grade. Some yards would call that a mid grade, but remember that uh, mid grade versus low grade is a huge difference in the yard that, you, that you're selling to. Uh, Boardsort.com, has it's the same price for mid grade and low grade. Uh, but I do have another buyer where mid grade is substantially different than low grade. Uh, and uh, it, their mid grade classification is actually closer to a peripheral classification on board sort. So you really need to know your buyers. All right, now. On this board here, let's get these screws out of the way. So on this board, we have some socket mounted ICs that we can get. Board sort doesn't mind if you remove uh, socket mounted ICs. Just bear in mind that whenever you remove a socket mounted IC, you risk downgrading the board. If you, you know, board sword says, yeah, you, it's okay. You can remove one or two. That's no big deal. Uh, especially if you have a lot of ICs on the board, um, as we have in this case. Uh, but just keep in mind that whenever you take something off of a board, you risk downgrading that board. So never depopulate something unless you know what you're going to do with it. Uh, who you're going to sell it to, if you're going to refine it, uh, or how you're going to make money off of it. And we have another socket mounted flat pack IC looking thing that is over here now. <laughs> that was weird. That one took off a running. All righty. Now then, we have these oscillators. And each one of those have aluminum heat sinks. Now, the question is at this point, uh, what are we dealing with here for a board? We're at a peripheral high grade value now because by removing the LCD screen and those two daughter cards, uh, we've been able to turn this into a peripheral high grade uh, because we've gotten rid of some of the deadness. Uh, now, the question is, do we need to remove these heat sinks? Not really. No, um, that would be fine because uh, they're not like big transformers uh, that are carrying a lot of ferrous weight on them. Um, this was a mounting block for that one IC, so that one is okay. There was the lever for that mounting block. Here, by the way, are the uh, epoxy dip tantalum capacitors that I talked about. And these ICs are not socket mounted. They're soldered onto the board. We have lots and lots of ICs all over this board. I'm tempted now, as I look at this, to think maybe we could go with a Telcom Low. Um, I'm going to remove that. 
big chunky looking thing. It's a capacitor. Just, you know, when you see some things that look big and chunky and you're thinking to yourself, hmm, would that lo lower the value of the board? You know, maybe that's worth taking off. Uh, I've, we've got these nylon risers and they're on screw posts, so we can pull those. That's not gonna make a huge difference. But it will, you know, if there's any kind of uh, questioning going on, when your buyer looks at it, uh, you know, getting the stuff that looks junky off of what's going to be a pretty high grade valuable board is definitely worth it. Uh, that might be a battery. Let's just pull it off. That way, it doesn't matter. Nah, it was a capacitor. Oh well. <laughs> Going in the low grade bin. Um, yeah, they put the the symbol underneath of the thing and made it, you know, so it's a little bit difficult to figure out what that is before you pull it off, but no big deal. So what we're dealing with right now is the question of peripheral high grade versus telecom low grade. I'm thinking that because it has these tin silvered fingers that it probably can go as a telecom low grade. And the reason I'm saying telecom low grade is because we still have some junk. Um, it is densely populated with ICs, but we have some things that from a telecom perspective are junky. So I believe that our work thus far, and the way I'm treating this is that I have turned this now into a telecom low grade board. This is a great opportunity to address the subject of, well, what if you make a mistake? Listen, the, the folks at boardsort.com, they're gonna get to know you as you sell material to them. And they're gonna recognize that, nah, you know, this was a judgment call and yeah, we, we think it should be this instead of that but they're not gonna penalize you for it unless you're consistently trying to get away with something. So as long as you're making an honest effort to accurately identify your board, at least boardsort.com isn't going to get upset with you. Now they may downgrade it and they'll let you know if they do, but they've also upgraded plenty of my material and told me that too, because I can be a little conservative sometimes. So don't panic, don't get scared, have fun with this, okay? And if you make a little mistake, yeah, it's not the end of the world. If you have ever wondered if you can upgrade a board through selective depopulation, the answer is yes, absolutely. Just be careful, think it through, and understand what you're trying to get to as you depopulate the board. In this case, we ended up with a telecom low grade peripheral high grade, peripheral low grade, some ICs, a little bit of insulated copper wire, some screws for the ferrous shred bucket, and some aluminum risers. If you want to see more about how to get the best value for your circuit boards and your electronics, check out the video that's popping up on the screen here. The other video that's popping up is the one that YouTube's algorithm thinks you want to see, so I'll be curious to see if they're accurate. And the big round one in the middle, that's to help you to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. Have a great day, everybody. Be safe.